Dr. Barr, how important is public education, kindergarten to high school, to people in Muncie, now as compared with, say, 55 years ago? Well, one way to answer that is to ask how people are voting with their pocketbooks. Uh, according to the uh, Middletown volume, in the 20s, the city devoted 45 percent of its expenditures to education. And Lynn thought that that indicated that the city really valued education. But uh, the contrast between the amount of money the city spends on the, the civil city and what it spends on education is uh, uh, dramatically changed. The uh, school budget is now larger than the uh, civil city budget by uh, a substantial amount. And so if you just looked at uh, the comparison between the uh, city budget and the school corporation budget, uh, the school corporation uh, is much larger and the, the uh, indication is that uh, if anything we value education more than in the 20s. Do you feel that people feel that they get their money's worth in education? Well, uh, some yes, some no. Uh, as in many communities, uh, Muncie is uh, full of uh, conflict over education. There are people in the community who are very pleased with the way public education has gone. There are others who are upset about everything from the open school concept to which neighborhood schools get closed uh, to teacher salaries. I've been uh, arranging uh, letters to the editor in the papers and it's interesting you'll find one set of letters that uh, collects over the years that say we pay teachers too much and another set that say the teachers don't get paid enough. Uh, so there's this conflict over everything from the level of payment to teachers and how much they work both during and after hours to uh, whether Muncie children are getting the same quality of education that children elsewhere in the country are getting. How has public education affected the community, both plus and minus? Uh, one of the uh, theoretical themes that we're looking at is the advance of equality. That is, has the community in the past 60 years become a, a more equal place? Uh, are the differences uh, less between the richest and the poorest? Or at least, uh, is there more uniformity? And education is one of those things where you can see a real advance in equality. Uh, everybody, almost everybody nowadays, achieves a high school diploma. Uh, the percentages are uh, in the 90s. And uh, that is much, much higher than it was back in the 20s. Uh, with respect to race and education, uh, back in the uh, uh, 20s and 30s, you might have uh, 100 black students entering as freshmen and uh, 10 graduating. And now the difference uh, between the races in students entering and students graduating is uh, uh, almost gone. Uh, so one thing public education has done is to uh, uh, equalize uh, rich and poor, uh, working in business, white and black, uh, to a degree. Now this is not to say that they're equal in everything, but with respect to getting what the public school system provides first and foremost, a secondary education, almost everyone in the community gets that. When the Lens visited Middletown in the 20s, they reported a social caste system at the city's only high school. If a student didn't belong to one of the boys or girls social clubs, the student didn't enter the building through the front door. What evidence do you see of a social system in the high school? We haven't looked at the social clubs in any detail, but uh, one of the uh, indicators of whether that social caste system has changed is to what extent kids are involved in extracurricular activities. Uh, uh, there was a survey of Middletown done in the 30s by a man named Raymond Fuller, and uh, some of the comments he picked up from uh, the uh, working class children were, we just don't have a chance to participate. There aren't enough social opportunities. Uh, our high school survey shows that uh, uh, both working and business class students have uh, apparently as much opportunity for extracurricular life as they desire. The differences between the races are much, much uh, smaller than they were. So uh, the response there is uh, much more equality, much more access to social life. This doesn't mean that there aren't elitist groups still, but uh, your average student if he chooses to participate with the social group, has a chance to do so. 
There is a tendency, by the way, some of the teachers have noticed this, uh, for extracurriculars to be a little less important now than they once were. It seems that uh, there are so many other things drawing the children away from school that uh, once 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock or 2.30 comes, they're gone. And uh, the school is not as much a center of extracurricular and recreational activity as it used to be. Is a high school education in the 80s a passport to a good job in Muncie or in any American community? Uh, here, uh, the answer is no, it's not a passport to a good job. It may be a passport to, uh, to some kind of employment, especially if you've been in a, in a vocational prep uh, course. But generally, because everybody gets a high school diploma and nobody really, uh, uh, I know there are competency tests that are now required, but still you have students graduating who can't read, students graduated who don't know how to compose a sentence. So the high school diploma in itself doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, generally, uh, studies that we've done and others on income and uh, education show that it takes more than the high school degree to make it into an acceptable uh, occupation. This doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of people around with high school degrees who are uh, employed. It does mean that uh, uh, generally they do not uh, have the world by the tail. Uh, as 20 years ago with that high school degree you did have. Nowadays, the sorting into the good jobs takes place after tech school, after some kind of business college, after some kind of university education. Uh, because everyone has a high school degree, it doesn't mean much. It's devalued in that sense. Everybody has one, but it doesn't mean as much. When the Lens came to Muncie in 1924, they hardly acknowledged the little college on the edge of the cornfield. This was not true when they returned in 1937. What impact has Ball State University had on this community? Oh, the impact is incredible. Uh, we haven't begun to measure it. As you know, Ball State is the largest employer uh, in Delaware County, uh, but its influence goes far beyond simply the number of people who work for the university. Uh, for example, uh, take school enrollment. For people under age 18, Muncie is either just like the rest of the nation or somewhat less likely to have children enrolled. But for young adults aged 18 to 34, uh, the rates for working class, business class, black, white, uh, are much higher. That is, the young adult in Muncie is much more likely to be enrolled in school of some kind than in the country as a whole. Uh, the differences are 10, 15 percent sometimes. That means that there is a context here uh, that makes it easy for uh, people to get some kind of additional schooling, to get adult education of one kind or another. Uh, we could go on and talk about the impact of the university on everything from the cultural setting uh, of the city you know, to uh, uh, the sense of identity around uh, high schools, uh, bearcat fever versus cardinal fever. Uh, I, I think Muncie has become uh, essentially uh, more a university town than an industrial town. In your studies, have you found that people in Muncie and Delaware County utilize the university as much as they could or should? Well, that's one of those questions that a sociologist can't answer. How much should you utilize the university? Uh, they use it a lot. Uh, we haven't compared uh, efficiency rates between Ball State and other schools, but uh, you know the clear impression is that this is a physical plant that is used night and day by townspeople as well as university students who come from other places.